Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Kino with stemwithkino.com, and today we're going to talk about engine oil systems. And I am starting to just go to different parts of the world in the simulator. And we are going to be in one of the Hawaiian Islands. You can see the Hawaiian Islands here. And we are not, we're not all the way on the westernmost one, but uh, it's the next to the one. I guess I should have uh, researched the, the correct way to pronounce that, but uh, I don't even want to pronounce it. Anybody from the uh, Hawaiian Islands, you can, you know, or it's indigenous to that area or it's been in that area uh, before you can uh, just, uh, never mind. It's not really even necessary. We know where we are. All right, we're at Barkin Sands Airport. And this is actually a military use airport. Again, skyvector.com. Uh, I love skyvector, skyvector.com, and I use them in real world situations. So that's a good thing about our simulator. We can actually use real world uh, navigation maps and things of that nature. And uh, we're going to take off and we're going to fly directly to this VOR 115.4. And why don't we, uh, K-A-U-A-I, K-A-U-A-I, I'm sorry guys, hang on, let's see, pronunciation, there's no V sound, Kawai, it's pronounced like Kawai, so Kawai is the island we're at, okay, Kauai. So we're on the island of Kauai and Barking Sands Airport. We're gonna fly to this uh, VOR and we'll be headed that way, but even before we get there, we're probably gonna be um, going into the oil system, so Let's go to the simulator and let's see where we are in the world. You can see those Hawaiian Islands right there. And we're coming on in. And I believe we're going to be on runway, okay, 3-4. Okay, so should be ready to go to propeller spinning. We have 115.4 in the nav radio and let's go so today we're going to talk about the engine oil system and the engine oil system is a very very important part of our aircraft Just like your car, you need engine oil for a couple reasons. Uh, we have a lot of moving parts going on, and they're moving very rapidly inside the engine. And so where there's friction, there's going to be heat that develops. So uh, if you watch my video on the four-stroke engine cycle, um, you'll know that the cylinder and the pistons are moving very, very fast during the uh, four-stroke cycle process. And as a result, if you have friction, there's gonna be some heat developed. So we need a proper amount of engine oil in that sense. Right, we need it, so let's get ourselves turned and pointed properly. As long as we're headed eastbound, we should be okay and we point it north now. Now there's two types of engine oil systems, okay? Typically uh, there's a wet sump and a dry sump. So, uh, so we're headed for the, for the coast. 
So yeah, there's a wet sump and there is a dry sump system. And we're going to show you some illustrations of the wet sump and the dry sump system. Uh, to the two types of systems and then we'll specifically go into detail of what's going on with the oil system or the engine oil system in the Cessna 152 uh, by way of the pilot operating engine. Now again, every aircraft has its own pilot op operating handbook. There's copies, like I have a copy that I'm going to show you in a PDF format. And it's pretty much almost identical. And the only thing is the weight and balance information in the aircraft is specific to that aircraft. So you don't want to be doing your weight and balance without making reference to that. Because the weight and balance for the pilot operating handbook that is particularly uh, relative to the particular aircraft has the actual, you know, distances from the uh, reference datum or firewall. And so you just want to always be making sure that your uh, weight and balance information is current with the particular aircraft that you are flying. So when we go out and we purchase a pilot operating handbook, it's just pretty much like a, a general uh, type of, I guess, just to kind of give you an idea of what's going on, the aircraft limitations, things of that nature should be the same but your instructor will brief you your flight instructor will brief you on you know the specific uh, nuances to the uh, aircraft because you may have more than one aircraft in this case this is uh, November this is November 625 Delta Lima well tomorrow in the next lesson you could be flying November 31 Sierra Delta or November 6379 Fox so they're, they're, although they're the same make and model, um, excuse me, uh, there, there could be different uh, types of instruments or equipment built into that particular airplane that you would need to be aware of. Okay. So I always like to do a little flyby and give you guys a little scenery and collide. Start flyby and we will jump in. Okay, so the engine oil system, which you can see here. Are, you can see the pilots or students they're actually checking the dipstick and on the dipstick there will be some calibrated markings and there should be like a minimum like a minimum mark and this will be particular to your aircraft dipstick and if it says okay well you're not gonna fly any less than this many quarts all right then you would actually have to talk to you know whoever your rental, your FB, whoever's at the FBO to get uh, more engine oil into that aircraft. And uh, you want to be very careful when you're dipping this. You want to have like a uh, napkin or, um, you know, some type of paper towel or something nearby because this will drip and you don't want that dripping down into the engine, onto the engine because the dipstick might be kind of positioned here. One not, and so if you're pulling out the dipstick, you don't want it leaking down there. So you want to have um, the um, dipstick. You want to have some type of cloth. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to just check out some images. Here, there, there, it doesn't look feel okay. So, a couple things about the dipstick. Uh, you will pull it up, but you have to unscrew it, and you can see the threads there. All right, so you'll have to unscrew it, and then you pull it up like this gentleman is doing at Blog AOPA, which is the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association.org. Okay, so they're responsible for that. Here you can kind of see where the threads are there, so you would just push it back down and make sure that you uh, twist it clockwise, and to make sure that it's secure because as pressure builds up, you don't want oil coming out and leaking onto the engine. 
So you want to make sure that this is nice and secure before you close the cover here. And this is a spring-loaded cover. Your instructor will show you how to uh, actually pop that up, get in there, twist it out, and eventually pull it up and look at it. So your instructor is going to show you how to check for oil. And after your instructor is comfortable with you checking oil on your own, then that is one step closer to being a private pilot or recreational pilot or whatever you are trying to become. Now, um, okay, let's talk about the wet sump and dry sump system. What we have here is a dry sump system. And basically, there is a oil tank. And notice how it's kind of separated from everything else. And everything's pretty much moved by pumps, by, by the oil pressure pump. All right, we'll have your oil pressure and oil temperature gauge uh, that is going to be connected in the system. And so temperature and pressure, and I'll show you the gauges in the Cessna 152 simulator that we are operating today. Um, so the wet sump, the major difference is with the dry sump, the tank is kind of separated from the system and things are move, moved around the system uh, via the pump. And then with the actual wet sump, I'm trying to see the best illustration because this is not that great of an illustration, but okay, we'll go with it. So. In the wet sump system, the oil is not kind of like separated. All right. It's kind of the oil is like right in there with the moving parts. So it will be an inter integral part of the engine. Um, that is, and I don't know why they're calling that because I see a separate tank. Here we go. All right. So it almost, these almost look the same, but they're not. So I guess what they're trying to do is dry sump, which I don't even believe that's a dry sump, but it's saying that there. So let's go to a true wet sump engine. You still have your pump, and this could be engine driven. The filter takes out contaminants. All right, so the, the oil moves through there, and you have an oil filter in your car, and that's what its job, to do. That's what its job is to do is to take out contaminants in the um, oil system because you don't want any contaminants. As these moving parts rub around, they build up heat. So you want to take the heat away from the moving parts by forming like a nice little seal. So let's say let's say let's see what Jeff says about this. We've seen the wet sump and the dry sump and let's just say see what Jeff says about and what I mean by Jeff is uh, Jefferson. Okay. So the engine oil system performs several functions lubrication of the engine's moving parts and cooling of the engine by reducing friction and removing uh, some of the heat from the cylinders. Additionally, engine oil improves engine efficiency by providing a seal between the cylinder walls and the pistons. During circulation, engine oil also carries away contaminants, we talked about that, which are removed as the oil passes through the filter. Reciprocating engines generally use either a wet sump or a dry sump system. We talked about that. Um, in the dry sump system, the oil is contained in a separate tank. That's the dry sump we talked about. So, even, okay, here's a dry sump system. So, oil is out here just hanging out in a separate tank. All right. And you have a scavenge pump that brings it through here. The pump applies vacuum pressure, pulls it through, and then at this point, there's, there's going to be pressure. Anything that runs through a pump, there's going to be some pressure. It runs through a filter, it's screened, the contaminants are removed, and then it gets to play with the cylinder and the pistons taking the heat away. All right. And a wet sump system, which all the oil is carried in a sump, which is an in integral part of the engine. It is simple, reliable, and suitable for most small reciprocating engines. All right. So we talked about the engine oil filler cap and let's come back to our aircraft. Let's go inside. 
and let's look in the cockpit and see where we will find Man, I'm telling you, this thing is not playing with me today. There we go. So, behind the control yoke, and there's a control yoke. I just moved it away for simulation purposes. You can see the oil temperature and the oil pressure gauge. Okay. There's also a Hobbs meter. You can ask your instructor about that, but the Hobbs meter is driven by oil pressure. But these are typically the two um, main instruments you're going to be looking at and you want to make sure that they're in the green arc. If they redline, that means your temperature is too high. If it redlines on this side, that means your oil pressure is too low. If it redlines on the right, that means your pressure is too high. And let's come out over to the tachometer. Look up. There's our tachometer. So the tachometer, engine oil, and engine temperature gauges are those uh, instruments that we're going to be looking at. Now, again, we're in the Cessna 152, and let's step out for a moment. And if you're ever, ever looking through your manual, okay, you're going to probably have a manual that you can purchase from your fixed base operator or your flight school. And this is what it will look like, Cessna 152 manual, okay? So let's start looking through these things, okay? You'll have a notice and, you know, read all notices, okay? Because it is for you, and this is actually from the manufacturer, all right? You'll get your performance specs, okay? It just basically tells you what the aircraft can do. And we're going to search for the oil system. So as we go through these systems, we're going to start talking about how do you find them in your manual, Okay, so this is the beginning of the manual. This is the information manual. And it has a table of contents. Generally, in most pilot operating handbooks, these sections are going to be broken down like this, like 1 through 9. You're going to see general information, limitations, emergency procedures, normal procedures, performance, weight and balance. Where we need to go is section 7, airplane and systems descriptions. All right, so we come on down, and let me try to find a little bug here. There we go, I found it. So you want to come down to Section 7. We're in Section 2 now. In section... Ah, so I get that, guys. All right, we're in Section um, 4 now. And we want to keep coming down. I can't find my little bug, my little buggy thing, and that's all right. We'll just uh, scroll down. We're in section five now. Let me speed this up. Now we're in section seven. So, section seven, airplane systems and descriptions. So you want to come down to the area. And normally, if we're talking about oil, it's going to be associated with your engine. So when you get down to the engine, you come down to engine controls, engine instruments, uh, new engine break-in, engine oil system, and 7-17. Come on down, and this will tell you everything you need to know about the engine oil system. 15, 16, this is 717, and I will read it verbatim. Oil for engine lubrication is supplied from a sump on the bottom of the engine. The capacity of the engine sump is six quarts. One additional quart is required if a full flow oil filter is installed. Oil is drawn from the sump through an oil suction strainer screen into the engine driven pump. So it actually goes through the filter before it actually goes through the pump. So maybe I read that schematic wrong. We'll discuss that in a moment. Um, oil is routed directly to the oil cooler and returns to the engine where it passes through a pressure screen. If the engine does not incorporate a full flow oil filter, okay, if the engine is equipped with a full flow oil filter, oil passes from the sump 
So a thermostatically controlled bypass valve. If the oil is cold, the bypass valve will oh, it allows the oil to bypass the oil cooler and flow directly to the filter. If the oil is hot, the bypass valve, you know, blah, 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 blah. So this tells you everything that's going on with in this oil system, how it works. And you will be, as a private pilot, as a recreational pilot, or when you go for your check ride for your license, you know, the examiner may ask you, well, okay, tell me about the oil system. And even if you don't know or you can't remember, have like a diagram. So the, see, the examiner is not there to grill you, okay? Well, they kind of are a little bit just to make sure you know your stuff. But if you don't know what's going on, at least know where, the, where to find it. So don't try to BS the instructor. Or the examiner just be like listen I don't know how it works verbatim I mean I understand the oil is pulled through a pump and a strainer and then is delivered to the pistons and the cylinders and stuff like that and it's responsible for you know reducing heat lubrication and engine cooling but I know where to find it so in your manual this is in section 7 7-17 is where it can be found, and we'll talk about finding other uh, oil systems. So we talked about the wet and the dry sump engine oil systems, and that's all I have to say about that. That's really all I really have to say. You can go into your manuals and read this stuff on your own, and if you have any questions, your instructor uh, is definitely... Um, somebody you want to talk to about this thing and if you don't have an instructor you can always visit, leave a comment in the video okay so that's pretty much all I wanted to cover about engine oil systems so we talked about the oil temperature pressure how it's related to the tachometer um, and we actually went to the specific um, I don't know if there's a diagram. Most of these, uh, you know, it has a fuel system, which we talked about, which is on 7 20. We talked about that, you know, so it kind of just goes into detail, but you can always, you know, go to Google. Google has everything, and you can just look at the differences between a wet and a dry sump system. All right. Well, Cooler and filter, high pressure screen. This is pretty much more like the uh, assessor. Right, we have the cylinders, we have the oil sump that's normally at the bottom of the engine. And okay, so that's it. We got 23 minutes in this video, and I wanted to try to keep it as short as possible with at the same time delivering information. So I'm Kino with stemwithkino.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you guys are safe out there. Have a great evening.